In this lesson, we're going to go through elemental composition of pure substances. So the first thing you need to know is that all pure substances, elements and compounds, have a fixed composition. So that means elements present and the ratio of those elements atoms is the same for every sample of the compound. For example, every sample of sodium chloride, NaCl, has a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium atoms on chlorine atoms. Every sample of H2O, water, has a two-to-one ratio of hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. So looking at the formula here, looking at the formula here, we have a two in front of the hydrogen, so that's where that two is coming from, and we don't have a subscript on the oxygen, so we would have an imaginary one here. So that's where that ratio is coming from. All right, the fixed ratio of atoms of each element in a compound also means there is a constant mass ratio of elements in every compound. For example, every sample of sodium chloride has 39.34% sodium and 60.66% chlorine by mass. Every sample of water, H2O, is 11.11% hydrogen and 88.89% oxygen by mass. So that ratio will always be the same no matter the size of your compound. All right, so let's look at an example. First example says, find the percent composition of sucrose, which is C12H22O11. Okay, so here's how we're going to approach this. So we're going to work each element individually. So we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. Okay, we have 12 carbons. If I go to the periodic table, each carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 atomic mass units. 12 times 12.01 12 is 144.12 atomic mass units. Okay. For hydrogen, we have 22 hydrogens. Each hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.008 atomic mass units, and 22 times 1.008 gives us a mass of 22.176 atomic mass units. Okay, and finally, we've got oxygen. There's 11 oxygens. Each oxygen has a molar mass of 12.00 atomic mass units. 11 times 16 is 176.00 atomic mass units. Okay, so we figured out the mass of each element. Now we need to figure out the total mass of the compound. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add up our three masses here. So 144.12 plus 22.176 plus 176, and we get 342.296 atomic mass units. Okay, so that's the total formula mass. All right, now, that's not what the question was asking for. The question was asking for, find the percent composition of sucrose. So we need to figure out the percent of the total mass that is carbon, what percent is hydrogen, what percent is oxygen. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this, kind of the same approach. We're going to break it down. So we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. So we're going to take each mass over the total. So for carbon, it was 144.12 over the total mass, which was 342.296. And then we'll just multiply by 100 to get a nice clean percent. So when I do the math here, it ends up being 42.10% carbon. 
Let's do the same thing for hydrogen. Again, we're going to take the part over the whole. So 22.176 over the whole, which was 342.296 times 100. And you end up with 6.478% here. Okay, Just to give myself a little bit more space, I'm going to move oxygen over. Um, so oxygen, um, the total mass of oxygen was 176.00. And the total mass, again, same thing, 342.296 times 100. And you end up with a mass percent of 51.42%. So you would report all three of those answers in this case because it was asking for the percent composition. Okay, so you would need to report the percent of carbon, the percent of hydrogen, and the percent of oxygen. All right, two substances can have the same percent composition by mass. Okay, so if you look at the example, we have carbon dioxide, CO2. Its ratio is one carbon for every two oxygens. And then we have C2O4. Now, we can simplify the ratio here. So the ratio is 2 to 4. We can also simplify that ratio further by making it 1 to 2. Okay, So we end up with the same ratio here. So when we break it down by percents, we're still going to have the same percent composition here. Even though they're different compounds, it's going to be the same percent carbon and the same percent oxygen. So if different compounds have the same smallest whole number ratio of atoms, Okay, so we're talking about this here. Uh, the composition by mass of those compounds is the same. All right. Two other um, terms you've probably heard before. Empirical formula. Empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. The molecular formula is the actual number of atoms in each element of the compound. I apologize on my table here. It looks like my subscripts didn't work. So... In this case, it's actually C2H4. So you'll have to kind of use your imagination down here. But if you notice, all four of my molecular formulas are different. They're all different. If you look at the empirical formulas, the first two are the same. We can simplify the molecular formula, and the lowest ratio ends up being CH2 for both of those. For formaldehyde and acetic acid, same thing, they have a different molecular formula, but they have the same empirical formula. Okay, we can simplify it to CH2O. Okay, so here's an example. It says a compound is made up of the following. 40% carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, and 53.3% oxygen. What's the empirical formula? Okay, so this is a little bit different than the first one. This time we have percents. We're going to need to figure out what the formula is here. So the first thing that we're going to do, if you notice, we have percents. And if you know a thing or two about percents, you know that we, these are going to add up to 100. So let's do this. Let's take all of our percents and let's change them to grams. So our first step will be change percent into grams. Okay, so for carbon... We're going to have 40%, which is now going to be 40.0 grams. For hydrogen, 6.7% will be 6.7 grams. And for oxygen, 53.3% will be 53.3 grams. Okay, no big deal so far. Um, step two is a little more complicated. Step two, change grams into moles. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated because we need to do a little conversion here. converting here. So for the first one for carbon, we have 40 grams. And when we set up our fraction, the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams. 
That's how many grams are in one mole. When you're setting up your fractions, just make sure that your units are diagonal from each other so that they will cancel out. Okay, um, so we end up here, oops, we end up here with an answer of 3.33 moles of carbon. Okay, for hydrogen, hydrogen we have 6.7 grams. And let's set up our conversion. Um, hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams for every one mole. This ends up being 6.63 moles of hydrogen. And then finally, oxygen. 53.3 grams. Oxygen is 16.0 grams for every one mole and that ends up being 3.33 moles of oxygen okay the third step and let me use a different color we got a lot of red going on here um, step number three we want to divide each mole amount by the smallest mole amount. Okay, so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to, let me use a different color here, I'm just going to kind of pick up where I left off. So the smallest mole amounts of the three answers that we got are 3.33. So I'm going to divide each one by the smallest number. So 3.33 divided by 3.33 is just 1. Here, it's going to be about 2. Not exactly, but it's really close. Um, go ahead and round it. And then down here, this will be 1. So we have 1 carbon, 2 hydrogens, 1 oxygen. So my formula will be 1 carbon, 2 hydrogens, 1 oxygen. That is our empirical formula. Okay, here's another example. Okay, this one's a little different. It says the molar mass of the molecular formula of the compound in example two, so going back to this one here, um, the molar mass of the molecular formula of the compound in example two is 180 grams per mole. What's the molecular formula? The molar mass of the empirical formula, um, which we figured out as CH2O, is 30.03 grams per mole. All right, so just a quick recap here. So you have the empirical formula. And that's the simplest. And... The molecular formula is basically the empirical formula, and we're going to multiply it. That didn't write. We're going to take the empirical formula, we're going to multiply it by some number, and that is going to be the molecular formula. So we want to figure out what this multiplier is. Okay, so to find this, we are going to do the molar mass the molar mass of the molecular over the molar mass of the empirical okay so it gives us all this information in the question so the molecular molar mass is 180 grams per mole and the empirical is 30.03 grams per mole so when I do the math here 180 divided by 30.03 I end up with a multiplier of 6 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 6 times the empirical formula, which is CH2O. I'm going to distribute that 6 to every single term. So it'll be C6H, 6 times 2 is 12, O6. So that right there is our molecular formula. Okay, another type of problem that you're going to need to be able to approach for the AP exam is a hydrate analysis. So a hydrate analysis involves this. We are heating a hydrated, so that means it's bound with water molecules, um, ionic solid, so it's an ionic solid combined with water molecules, and analyzing mass change to determine mole ratio of water to anhydrous, so anhydrous means it doesn't have any water, uh, solid. So we've got something and it's got water in it, we're going to heat it up, that water's going to burn off, and then we're just going to be left with the solid. Okay? All right. So, whoa, this looks like a lot of a lot of stuff here. So, example four, a student is assigned to the task of determining the moles of water in one mole of uh, CuSO4, copper sulfate, um, times some multiplier of H2O. The student collects the data shown below. Okay, so we've got a data table. All right, so a lot of information here, but I want to point something out. So initial mass of sample and container. So this is our solid sample in the container, and we heat it. So the first time we heat it, look, we lost a bunch of mass. We went from 27 to about 26. The second time we heated it, so we took that sample we've already heated once, and we heat it again. And look, the mass changes again. It lowers again. The third time we heat it, look, the mass doesn't change very much, but it does change. So when the mass pretty much stops changing, that's how you know that you've burned off all that water. All right, so here we don't have a lot of space, so I'm going to be flipping back and forth here. So I'm actually going to add a page here so I have some extra room. Okay, so here's our problem. First thing we need to do is we need to find how many moles of water we lost. Okay, so to do that, we're going to take the initial mass of the sample and the container, so that's the number I've circled, and we're going to subtract the final um, mass of the sample and the container, so after we heated it the third time. So let me go down to my blank page where I've got lots of space here. So that first step is find the moles of water lost. So we're going to take the mass of our container, so 27.467 grams, and we're going to subtract the final mass of our container. So after we heated it a bunch of times, what was left over? Um, so 25.647. So we're trying to figure out how many grams we lost, and that's going to be the water. So we lost 1.82 grams. But that's not our moles. So we need to convert our grams to moles. So that'll be 1.82 grams. Um, water's molar mass is 18.02. Okay, and we do the math here, we end up with 0 0.101 moles of water. Okay, great. Um, so we've got the moles of water. Now we need to figure out, like, the solid that was left over, how many moles of that we had. Okay, so let's go back up to our table and take a look here. And let me erase this so we have, it's a little bit clearer about what we're talking about. So if we wanted to figure out the solid that we had left, what would we subtract? Well, we know that we know that this is the solid that was left over. But we want to isolate just the solid from the container because we don't want to include the container in our measurement. So we're going to subtract the mass of the empty container to figure out what the solid was. 
All right, so step two, find the moles of our anhydrous compound. Okay, so we're gonna subtract those two numbers. So the mass of our solid after we burned off the water was 25.647, and then we'll subtract the empty container, 22.347. And we'll be left with 3.30 grams. So same thing that we did with the water. We need to convert that to moles. So we've got 3.30 grams. Okay. One mole. And the molar mass of our copper sulfate is 159.6 grams. So this ends up being 0 0.0207 moles of our copper sulfate. Okay, but again, that's not what the question is asking for. The question wants us um, to determine the moles of water in one compound. We're trying to figure out, oops, we're trying to figure out what this N value is right here. Okay, um, so to do that, We've done all the heavy lifting for this problem. The last step is to determine the ratio. To do that, we're going to do moles of water over the moles of our copper sulfate. Okay, so our water was 0 0.101 and our copper sulfate 0 0.0207 moles. And this one's not as close, but it's still pretty close to a whole number. It ends up being 4.87, um, which is approximately 5. So that is going to be our multiplier. So our formula would be CuSO4 times 5 uh, H2O. So that is how to answer that question. All right, I think we have one more problem left. Let's go back and look at this one. Okay, this is the last type of example that you might see on the AP test. So it says when 12.915 grams of a hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen, 18.942 grams of CO2 and 7.749 grams of H2O are collected. Uh, what's the empirical formula? So this is a combustion problem. So combustion, the formula always takes the shape of a hydrocarbon. So it's going to be C, uh, we don't know, H, we don't know, uh, O, we don't know. Uh, we're going to combine that with oxygen. We need oxygen for a combustion reaction. And then on the other side, we have CO2 gas. And we have H2O gas. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, our first step is we need to determine the mass of carbon, hydrogen, carbon and hydrogen from the compounds. Okay, and we're going to do something you may not have seen before. So step one, uh, determine mass of carbon and hydrogen. Okay, so for carbon, carbon, it tells us nothing in the question, but Look, carbon is in this. Carbon is in CO2. Okay, so just bear with me. So we've got 18.942 grams of CO2. Okay, so the whole compound CO2 has a molar mass of 44.01 grams. That's how many grams are in CO2. And in CO2, we have carbon. So for every molecule of CO2, we have 12.01 grams of carbon. 
Now, you're probably thinking, well, wait a second, you've got grams on the top and the bottom. Okay, well, n yes, but this is grams of CO2, and the top is just grams of carbon. So, yes, they're both grams, but they're not the same. All right, so our grams of carbon dioxide are going to cancel out, and we'll just be left with grams of carbon. So here, we end up with 5.166 grams of carbon. We're going to repeat the process using hydrogen. So again, looking at the two compounds that it gave us, hydrogen is here in water. All right, so for water, we have 7.749 grams of water. Water, the, the whole water molecule, has a molar mass of 18.02 grams. Again, that's of water. And in water, there are 2.02 grams of hydrogen. So, again, grams on the top and the bottom, but the bottom of our fraction is grams of H2O. The top is just hydrogen. So here you end up with 0 0.8 six eight six grams of hydrogen okay so now what well we're going to subtract the masses of carbon and hydrogen from the hydrocarbon to determine the mass of oxygen okay so if you notice in both of our compounds here, we have oxygen here and we have oxygen here. So we can't really do the same process that we did to find carbon and hydrogen, but we do know in our hydrocarbon, that's this piece right here, we have oxygen and we want to isolate that oxygen. So the hydrocarbon has a mass of 12.915 grams total. Now we know conservation of mass, that the mass of carbon on the left side of the reaction is going to be equal to the amount of carbon on the right side. Same thing with hydrogen. You can't create or destroy matter, so it's, it's going to be the same. Our mass has to be conserved. So let's subtract out the mass of carbon, and we'll also subtract out the mass of hydrogen. And we end up with 6.8804 grams of oxygen. Okay, so now we have our grams of all of these. And you can probably guess what's next. We're going to take all of those grams and turn them into moles. So I have run out of space. So let me add another page here. Okay, so now it says... Our next step is to convert to moles. So let's take all of those numbers. All right, so from carbon, carbon was 5.166 grams of carbon. Carbon's molar mass is 12.01, and that's for every one mole. So you end up with 0 0.4304 moles of carbon. For hydrogen, 0 0.8686 grams of hydrogen. Molar mass of hydrogen, 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen for every one mole of hydrogen. And you end up with 0 0.86 moles. And finally, oxygen. Sixteen grams of oxygen for every one mole of oxygen. You end up with zero point four two nine eight oxygen. Oops, that should be moles. Okay, uh, third step is to divide by the smallest number. of moles. All right, so at this point it's the same as what we've been doing. Um, so our smallest number is 0 
So here you end up with about one, here you end up with about two, and here you end up with about one. So for carbon, we had one, hydrogen, we had two, oxygen, we had one. There is our empirical formula.